And so what you're going to start with is, here's the uh, Sprout workspace. And down here on the touch mat, it gives you a bunch of options to do different things. Um, today we're going to do the 3D capture. So we'll go ahead and push that button on the mat. And um, that's going to bring up the options um, for either a 3D snapshot or a full scan. Um, we're going to do the full scan because we want to be able to see the entire object um, and turn it and everything. So we'll go ahead and click on that. This gives you two options. Manual scan, which is basically you take your object, place it on the touch mat, and it'll give you directions to turn it um, as it does the different cycles, which I have done and works great. Um, but if you do have the stage, I find it's a little bit easier, obviously. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click on that and kind of show you how that works. Um, all you do is plug it into your USB part, port, and we're going to go ahead and put the stage on the mat. Then we're going to go ahead and scan the background. Now what that's doing is just getting the picture of the background so it can remove it in the end after it's done the full 3D scan of the object. Now here's a best practice tip for when you're ready to scan your object. The best thing to do is, I find when you're using the stage, is put some of the sticky putty right on the back because then it can stick to the stage without um, slipping around because if it slips at all during your scan, um, it's not going to scan right because um, it'll be getting different angles than it's supposed to. So just put some of that on the back. Then when you're ready, um, you can either choose to have your stage tilted or have it flat. I find that tilting works a little better. It's able to get more angles and things. So we're going to go ahead and put our object on the tilted stage. And as you can see, my object barely fits. It is barely within the bounds of the stage. And if you're using the stage, it works much better if you use an object that fits within that stage. So I'm glad that our object fits. So we'll go ahead and put that on there and start the scan. It actually did really well. It missed one tiny little spot down there. Um, but then see how the back obviously didn't scan because we had the back facing down. Um, so for this particular project, I found that since it um, picks up the owl front so well, this one I actually went ahead and downloaded into a program called Mesh Mixer and just did a fill so it did a flat back. And that, then I was just done. One cycle, you know, fill the back with Mesh Mixer and call it good. Um, but what I found as a best practice is, for instance, for this action figure, when I scanned him, um, what I did was I did one cycle with him laying completely flat, one cycle with him propped up on some of, on like a glob of that, um, you know, that sticky wall stuff, um, then did one with him standing, granted that time I had the, the, uh, stage put flat, and then did one forward a little with the glob under there and then completely on the face with the globs under the feet. And that way um, each of the cycles were a little bit connected so it had a better way to mesh them all together in the end rather than just doing the front and then the back because then I feel like it has a little bit of a hard time meshing it correctly. Um, so I find that if you can do like progressive scans it works a lot better with your items if you can it usually it takes oh probably at least five or six good cycles um, without your object moving to get a really nice 3d scan so I'm gonna be doing a little project with this that I'll show you um, a lot of fun I printed some little mini owls that I'm going to um, turn into some cute bookmarks and I will show you that project in the blog post